afternoon, good morning, whatever time it is. Uh, it's my book that I finished from my reading challenge. Swearing is Good for You, The Amazing Science of Bad Language by Emma Byrne. Oh, it's a pretty cool book. It was published in 2017, I think. 2017 is the first copyright. Uh, basically, it's a bit of an in-depth study in swearing. Um, there's an interesting chapter on Tourette's syndrome, um, swearing in the workplace, other primates that swear, which I didn't take an excerpt from this because it's, uh, it would have to be like quite some quite long paragraphs, but learning, they actually did manage to teach chimpanzees. They didn't teach them to swear, but they actually naturally learned to swear, so that's pretty interesting. Um, it covers swearing in uh, other languages as well, so if you're bilingual or multilingual, it's pretty pretty interesting there. Um, just a couple of, couple of excerpts that I found. And this is to do with uh, someone who suffered brain damage. <clears throat> One of the first hints about the difference between hemispheres emerged back in the late 60s and early 70s, where Professor Guido Gainotti, now at the Catholic University of Rome, studies patients who had suffered damage to one side of their brain. Those whose damage was limited to the left side became very agitated, upset and angry in response to problems they encountered during their treatment, which is understandable, perhaps even inevitable. However, in the cases with damage to the right hemisphere, Professor Gennotti noticed that an indifference reaction, noted an indifference reaction, nothing seemed to move these patients to even the slightest emotional response, even when they were faced with devastating consequences to their brain, of their brain damage. Professor Gennotti came to what seemed the obvious conclusion, that the right hemisphere is where emotion resides. Those patients with left hemisphere damage were able to respond in a natural way to the illness, with anger, frustration and depression. Those patients with right hemisphere brain damage were actually were reacting unnaturally by not reacting at all. So it talks about uh, like the areas, areas of your brain, this chapter in particular talks about areas in your brain that uh, take part in swearing. This is, this is to do with a, an ice challenge that they use to, to, to determine if you, was, if you had a higher pain tolerance while you were swearing. Let's see. Basic, uh, I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing. But basically they, they gave people three words they were allowed to use. They were allowed to use a, a swear word an neutral word and a positive word and the people that use words like ah oh, no bugger other swear words uh had like they managed to keep their hands in the ice water a lot longer than people who are using neutral words which is quite interesting um this is about banter so this is about hassling people at work what we'd call people hassling um and it's interesting that it's in new zealand too um barbara interviewed and observed a mix of men and women in three small it companies in new zealand and almost all of them that they'd taken, said that they'd taken the piss at work. In fact, piss taking is a matter of pride and, male or female, most, employ me, most employees are insistent that they were included in banter and that they gave as good as they got. In three months of observation that Barbara carried out, she discovered many things. Firstly, piss taking, whether it involves swearing or not, is really important for team bonding and morale. The most common piss takes were always were all ways of bringing the team closer. The employees of these three companies only insulted the people they knew and got along well with. Being initiated into banter was a sign of finally being accepted. Whenever someone new arrived, insults would start off gently and then ramp up as the team tested to see whether the new person could take a joke. Um, and I'm not going to read about this, but there was an interesting difference between... Uh, men's swear words and female swear words um, women where are we men have a tendency to uh, to insult each other's sexuality uh, and masculinity whereby uh, women's swear words were largely to do with their their uh, their implicit promiscuity I guess is the one way of saying it um, so it's more, men was more like insulting people's masculinity where 
uh, women's insults were more to do with um, their frequency of having intercourse, which is quite interesting. Um, if you're interested in like neuroscience and swearing, it's it's pretty interesting. I found the section on the uh, the chimpanzees really interesting. Um, how they learned how to swear through sign language is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, check it out.